Hi, uh, my name is Derek and I'm your instructor for our machine learning course and uh, data analytics course. Um, this video uh, probably should be relatively quick. I just wanted to show a few things about using J Jupyter Lab um, and also running, uh, you know, using Jupyter Notebooks for assignments and for the materials that we use for this class, okay? So, um, so I want to start I want to cover these things first. Um, so I showed at the end of the previous video, if you looked at that, on how to get set up in Windows or Mac OS, um, kind of how to stop and start your server. So let's make certain everybody can uh, start the server using the uh, the Vagrant uh, virtual machine setup. Um, and uh, I'll show how to secure shell into it uh, or how to run a terminal and a few other things and talk a little bit about the Jupyter Lab workspace and open a new notebook and stuff. So, um, so this, this is probably going to be a little bit of, of a, a random kind of thing. Just I'm, I just want to show a few things about, um, you know, that I think are useful uh, features of the Jupyter Lab um, and, and using Jupyter Notebooks and things, okay? So once again, in order to use the Vagrant commands like Vagrant up and Vagrant halt, you have to be in the directory uh, where the vagrant file resides. So that means if you set up the way I suggested, uh, you should have a directory called repos, and in there you have a directory called whatever the name of the repository is, like the ML Python class for my machine learning class, right? So when you're in that directory, you know, again, if you're on Windows, um, your path or Mac OS, your path might look slightly different. Um, so for Windows, you'll be on C colon users dash repos, whatever, okay? But if you're in that directory, that, that's the directory that you cloned um, um, and, and pulled all these files down into, so the readme, and you've got subdirectories with the data for the class and documents, um, and you've got subdirectories with the, our assignments and lectures and things in there. So it's from here that you can do the, the, your vagrant commands. So, so you can do vagrant commands in a directory where you have a vagrant file. And, and as you can see here, if you list hidden files or hidden directories, a dot vagrant directory was created when you did the first vagrant up, and this is where actually your virtual machine image is and, and other stuff, okay? So, um, you should do a vagrant up. Um, that will actually start the virtual machine, which starts the Jupyter Hub uh, ser server, right? Um, as I pointed out in the last video, whenever you do a, a vagrant up, there's a couple things to maybe look out for here. So for one, you know, hopefully you're not seeing any like error messages or things. Um, uh, some warnings sometimes are fine, but um, uh, and and for another, you do want to make certain that you are seeing that the port 8000 is being forwarded. Okay, so that's the port that we're going to use. Um, so basically, the the port 8000 on the virtual machine, the guest is being forwarded to port 8000 on the host, which means that in a web browser, I can. Um, uh, open up port 8000 and I should be able to access the um, the, the Jupyter lab running inside of the the uh, virtual machine in the guest okay so you want to make certain that your port 22 is being forwarded so you have secure shell access and the other thing is you want to make certain that um, the uh, it's showing that your home directory where you have this repository here is being um, mounted and shared onto a direct a directory in the guest machine called slash vagrant. Okay, so that's how we actually access the files. Um, right here. Okay, so that usually, I mean, you know, it should only take you know thirty seconds or less for that to start up. And once that's running, um, the way you access um, the uh, Jupyter Hub, Ju uh, the Jupyter Lab interface, is by going to you open up in a browser on the same machine, go to localhost and then colon, and then port 8000. So if, if the port is being forwarded correctly, that should be able to access uh, Jupyter Hub slash Jupyter Lab um, from there, right? Uh, equivalently, you can use the, the special IP address 127.0.0.1, that's your home address, right? So either way should work. Um, I mean, sometimes localhost might not be defined, so you should always be able to use 127.0.0.1 uh, to get there. All right. Um, 
So, oh, I, I kind of skipped over this. So let me log. You can you can log in and out of this if you want to. Uh, it does come up and ask you to sign in with a username and password, right? So the the default username is Vagrant V A G R A N T, and the default password is the same Vagrant V A G R A N T. So this password isn't really uh, important. So there's no real need to keep it secret, right? So I normally allow my browser password manager to save this so I don't have to keep typing those in every time when this comes up in here, right? Um, so once you get in your, um, um, you're, you're going to be greeted with the, the basic interface for the, this. Is, this is really what's, what's called Jupyter Lab, okay? So um, over on the left here, you got uh, a few things. So I'll go through these one by one, and then um, so this over here, um, you can actually collapse that. So, so th these are the how you access um, the the things to control Jupyter Lab here. So you've got a file browser, um, and if you want to, you can collapse that. So you just have only your your paned interface area here. You've got a file browser. Uh, something to manage your running sessions. Um, you have this one is really for commands to help you find commands. So, so search for commands to run. So, so you can use, either use the file menus to find these uh, or learn the, the keyboard shortcuts. Or if, if, if you're having trouble finding something, you can go in here to search for commands basically. Um, so, and then we're not in this class, you're not going to really need the property inspector um, and and this will help you keep track of, of kind of open tabs if you need to and I'll come back and talk about the extensions here in a bit so um, so let me let me then mention one or two things about the uh, the paint interface over here okay so th this area over here uh, allows you to open up um, three main kinds of things. So you can have notebooks open, um, you can have uh, what are known as uh, IPython kernel sessions or console sessions open. Uh, and it, it, It's actually more than three things. So you can have other things like terminals or other kinds of editors. So you can have text file editors and markdown file editors and things like that. So, so um, let me open up an existing notebook and just say one or two things about this paint interface. So um, this is pretty powerful. It's becoming kind of standard, especially when you have sort of a wide screen uh, development environment. So for example, let me open up two different notebooks. Um, so I'll open up our first two notebooks here, the 1-1 for Python programming and 1-2. Uh, so I just navigated to uh, the lectures subdirectory Python stack, and I opened up two notebooks here, um, our first two notebooks that we're going to be using, lecture notebooks that we use for the class here, right? So what I mainly wanted to point out is that this is a, a paned interface. So if you take these tabs and you drag them around, you'll see kind of this blue area hap happening. So um, I normally like to run things kind of side by side. So I often have two panes open. I have one over here and one over here. Um, and if you need um, extra area, you can always close that off to, to maximize as much for your working interface. Okay. And as you'll later see, so I mean, you can keep splitting these, you know. So um, I could open up. Um, actually, let's open up like a, a new. Um, I'll say a new console session. So I could open up a console session, and if I wanted to, I could pull that over here, right? Um, and you can you can drag these, you know, tabs back and forth between each other. So you can put the tabs into to new places like that, right? So anyway, I mean, this this allows you some flexibility for getting things laid out the way that you want here. So another thing, so I often have, um, uh, I'll come back to this here, but I often like to have a, a running console session here, but actually attached to my notebook um, and a contextual help here, okay? So anyway, this is very useful, being able to kind of set up your, your environment. Um, you can have more things in here than that. So for example, um, like it showed in the the launcher here, um, you know, you can have uh, text file editors. There are other kinds of editors or viewers as well. Um, 
So for example, like in our data directory, we've got a bunch of comma separated value files. Um, so if you open up one of these, you'll get uh, a nice um, interface that allows you to browse it, uh, a, a table of values. Um, so there's lots of things to explore. Okay, there's more than just Python and Python notebooks now nowadays with the Jupyter Lab. So that's pretty much all I'm probably going to say about about that. Okay. Um, so here, this this allows you to um, manage your running session. So one more thing that I did want to show. I want to show running a terminal before I, I forget um, think about it. So. Uh, you can run actual command line terminals. So this command line terminal is actually running inside of the virtual machine, right? So the virtual machine is a, a, a Linux. It's an Ubuntu setup. So, um, you know, by default, you're logged in as the Vagrant user. So when you start up a terminal, um, you'll be in here as the Vagrant user. So there's kind of two ways to get terminal, um, you know, uh, command line access uh to your running virtual machine. You can do it through that, so you can open up a, a, a terminal session um, and you'll be able to access the, uh, the Vagrant user. The Vagrant user has SUDO um, privileges, so you can run things as the super user, install stuff if you need to. I'll show that in a second here. Um, the other thing you can do, you can also secure shell in um, from your, your host machine into the guest machine. So if you do a Vagrant SSH. This will secure shell, um, and it, it's this is a passwordless secure shell, so it already has it set up uh, with with the uh, secure shell key and things. So, so you can get in to the Vagrant user um, from your, you know, uh, if you're on Windows from your DOS command line prompt or whatever. So you can do it both ways, right? Um, so you probably won't have to use the command line shell um, a lot in this class, but uh, you know I might, for example, I might have forgotten something. Or if you want to use uh, this Jupyter Hub, Jupyter Lab setup on your own, you might need to install some of your own stuff. So for example, just real quickly. Um, so first of all, if I want to install something into um, um, that, there's I've got um, what are known as a um, uh, a kernel defined for us called the Python 3 datasci kernel, but but if you wanted to install some additional thing into that, you, we first have to do say conda um, uh, um, activate the in environment. So I just mistyped that there. So so like it says here, if you want to, we can do it can run all the conda commands. Um, uh, from here. So I wanted to activate uh, this one. So you can copy and paste, right? Um, and then once I've got that uh, environment activated, anything I install uh, in into the environment um, hmm, doesn't usually take this long to act activate the environment, but but anything you do like with a cond install will get installed into the um, uh, active environment that you have. So, um, not certain why that took so long, but so for example, if I wanted to install, say, Boca for doing some more kind of advanced uh, plotting, um, interactive plots. I don't think I've got that by default into the Python 3 data, data science um, uh, environment here, so we can install that. <clears throat> so, yeah, that should work. Maybe I won't wait around here for to see um, that if that does it or not. But but if, if, if we find that you need to install some additional stuff, you can do that from here or by secure shelling in um, using using Vagrant there, okay. Um, okay. So let me, let me check. So we've talked about um, starting up the server and connecting to it and, and I, I looked at running a, a terminal uh, and, and using the workspace um, so um, actually at the end of the video, I'll show you shutting down. Um, so, um, 
So let me go back to kind of going through these here. Uh, um, so if you, actually, let me save this one. I'll come back to, you know, using the, the command search when I talk a little bit about notebooks, right? Uh, like I said, you probably won't really, we won't really be using these or, you know, you can see what all the open tabs are, manage them here. Let me just say one thing about extensions. So you might see me using a couple of extensions. Um, um, I've noticed we we might have some configuration problems. I'll try and get this fixed before, so hopefully by the time you're watching this video, maybe you'll get this, um, maybe you won't be having these issues, but I think we've got some permission issues. Um, but um, you can add in extensions. So like it says here, this is this is kind of third-party sorts of things that aren't part of the, um, um, the, the standard stuff that's installed with JupyterLab. Um, but two that, that you might find useful. I do find the, the table of contents. So you can search for them and install them. Um, so there's two here, but the, the first one, the table of contents, um, is, is all you need. Um, and I also like collapsible headings. Um, so I, I've noticed, like I said, I think the table of contents does work way, the way I've got it right now, although you often see like a, an error um, uh, from the build here. So. But yeah, like I said, another one that I kind of like is the collapsible headings here. So anyway, you can try those out. Um, hopefully they'll be working uh, better than, than they are right now by the time um, you're watching this video here. So we'll go ahead and let that continue building there. So, um, okay, um, and, and, you know, I should point out um, also... This file browser, by by default, I've got it set up so that it'll start off that you'll see a ML Python class. So uh, I don't know if I already mentioned that. So this is actually um, a um, you know it, it, it's the the directory is being shared with your host machine. Okay, so all all these files. Um, I'm actually secure shelled in here, so let me exit. So so I'm, I'm back on my host machine now. So, so all these files that you have here, it's really the same files being shared. So if you make changes, for example, when you work on assignments and things, uh, you can actually access any, any files and stuff that you change or, or, um, you know, uh, or add or, or whatever on your host machine, right? Uh, and, and they'll all be uh, in this ML Python class. So for example, if I create like a new file, uh, let's say a new text file, uh, and rename it. Um, where's the rename? There it is. Um, uh, and then we open it up and put some text in there. And save it, right? Um, so that file is, is actually on my guest, or on my host machine uh, in that same directory. So now you'll be able to see the file there, um, and you can use your regular file browser to get to it. Um, you know, and it has the you know the contents that I just added to the uh, the file there. If you can see that, so okay. So that's the main thing, except for shutting down the server of, of you know kind of the things I wanted to point out about the, the notebook, although also I'll show a little bit about using that command tool and some other things here. So um, I want to talk a little bit about Jupyter Notebooks, okay, um, uh, how to use them and um, using the contextual help and, and finding uh, things, okay. Um, so I opened up a couple of, of notebooks and, and some other stuff here. Uh, in fact, I'm going to close off this, and I usually like to just keep my notebook here. Um, and then I often keep other things over here, and I'll talk about these, um, including the contextual help here. So all the notebooks that I give you for this class should run cleanly from top to bottom, and any notebook that you create for an assignment or something also should run cleanly from top to bottom. So what I mean by that is that um, um, you should be able to do this. This restarts the kernel and runs all the cells on the kernel, right? So when you do this for a notebook, uh, click that here, 
it'll actually rerun all these cells right uh, and and all you know you shouldn't end up having like somewhere halfway in between on this notebook uh, where a, a cell fails with an exception or something okay so oop, my, so like I said for these extensions I often get it that that it, the the build fails for the table of contents but it actually does seem to work um, so if I if I reload um, you'll often see yep oh, no it didn't come up there so so we'll come back to that. Um, so anyway, back to this. So, you, so your notebook should run cleanly from top to bottom, okay? Um, oh, another thing I, I didn't mean, mean, mean to show you, probably the first notebook you should try out and run is um, under lectures, there's a notebook called Test Jupyter Hub Setup. So all this does is try and load all these libraries and then print out the version of each one. So that one also should you should be able to, to run that cleanly from top to bottom, and you'll see that that all these should run and that you'll get the versions of, of each of the the libraries. So we'll, we'll be using you know NumPy and Matplotlib and um, Scikit-Learn in this class, and maybe some of these others as well. So. Um, okay, let's let's talk a little bit about notebooks. So notebooks is um, our an example of a cell-based um, environment. So there's two main types of cells that we'll be using in this class: things that are called markdown cells and things that are called um, um, code cells. All right. So markdown cell. The the purpose of a markdown cell is really just to enter in text. Okay. Um, so a notebook is supposed to be a collection, uh, supposed to be like a readable um, but executable uh, book or, you know, um, a paper or something, right? So if, if I need to, to describe something textually, I should create a, a markdown cell. So you, you can get into these by clicking on them. Uh, so for a markdown cell, you can get into it. Um, so as you can see, um, Python has an idea of... of what it thinks is the current selected cell, and you can you can you know click on these to go to, to, to change those, or you can use up and down arrow keys. If you want to get really proficient in using the notebook, you know you want to learn how to instead of mousing around, how, how to to move around cells. Um, so um, so if if you if you're in a cell, if you're in a markdown cell, and you hit uh, Shift Enter, um, it will actually render. You know the the text in there, all right? So and and I won't go into kind of so, so these markdown cells um, allow you to enter in text in a mark markup language called Markdown. Um, so they allow you to enter in text. You know, so you can give um, like chapter headings, or you can give subheadings using pound and sub subheadings. that uh, you know so, so you have things in the text so you can enter in um, you know bold text using two stars Alex just has a single star around them. So again, and, and some of this you can kind of see, uh, but um, you know, if, again, if you hit Shift Enter, it'll render it, so you can you can see kind of um, uh, the the result of, of some of this mark markdown text that I'm doing here. Um, oh, by the way, now that I'm looking at this, one thing I often like to have. Um, Um, a few uh, settings turned on, like I, I usually like to have um, um, uh, line numbers turned on and, and have um, Forgetting where that is now. Um, oh, 
Oh yeah. Well, let's let's come back to that. Um, yeah, we're I, I, I thought line numbers were on on settings here and things. So, um, okay. But anyway, so, so yeah, there's there's lots of things you can customize. You know, change themes and stuff like that in here. Um, so back to Markdown. So again, when, when you double click into this, uh, you can get in into the editing mode. So and, and shift in or uh, renders it. Um, one one thing maybe I should mention. I mean. The, the, the notebooks are kind of modal. They're, they're like VI or like a modal editor, if you know what that is. So you're either in um, a mode where you're navigating around or you're in a mode where you can edit the particular cell. So, so here, when, when I've got the blue bar over here, I'm just um, able to move around. Like I can use the arrow keys to go up and down from cells. Uh, and then, but if I hit enter, when I'm you know, in the navigating mode, that'll change me into the editing mode, right? So, so now I'm in here able to edit the text, right? Um, so anyway, so you can have bullets and lists. Um, like that. Um, you can have um, numbered list. Um, and, and so on. So when I ask you to do assignments for this class, there might be some times when, you know, you need to give me a written answer for something, or you might have a final project in this class for your final test, um, in which case I'll probably want, like, um, a Jupyter Notebook, um, but you have to think of it as kind of like a document, right? So when you're writing the document, you know, you'll need to use, learn at least the basics of using Markdown to, you know, write your sections and give me your descriptions, your write-up of your results and things like that. So. Another thing, um, um, uh, these notebooks support what are known as uh, uh, LaTeX uh, math markdown. So, so if, if you learn... Um, The, the basics of the LaTeX markup mark, markup language. You can use that to write mathematical expressions in your notebooks and things like that. So, um, so I, sh I should have a link somewhere to, you know, so th there's quick guides about all the different parts of Markdown that, that you can use in order to format your text in, in your Markdown cell. So oh, I noticed, right, the, the type of the cell, um, you can change the type of the cell here. Um, and there's also, you know, keyboard shortcuts to change it from a markdown cell to a code cell and, and vice versa, all right? Um, and so then the other cells that you have are code cells, okay? So when you're in a code cell, um, if you're running a Python kernel like we're doing here, you can, t you can put in Python code, and again, if you hit Shift-Enter, um, it'll actually execute the cell. So in this case, it'll execute the code. And if there's any output from the code, you'll see the output there. So, so these Python cells, you can um, uh, enter in, you know, very any legal Python code. So the value of V is V, right? And then if you hit shift enter, um, it'll execute the code, all right? Um, notice, um, so over here, uh, one reason why I, I wanted to kind of point out these panes, so my kind of normal way, now that I've been learning Jupyter Lab a little, in a little bit more detail, um, is, is I often like to have a contextual help and um, an IPython uh, uh, kernel attached to my notebook over here running on the right-hand side. So to get a contextual help, uh, I mean, there's lots of different ways, but you can you can just right click um, over in the notebook um, and say show contextual help, right? And that'll give you this contextual help. Uh, and then you know I, I like to usually have it um, um, over here on, on the top. So what that allows you to do is um, anytime you're in these cells, um, see if I can get something a little bit more interesting, um, like the the math exponential value here so um it's not a real great help but um, um how about the sign so, so anytime you're within the context it, it it's keeping track of, of where you are 
um, so it will um, pop up hopefully the relevant kind of information um, ab about your code that you're currently at in this contextual help. That, that can help you a lot, you know, in terms of sometimes um, in terms of um, so so even for your own defined functions, if you provide code documentation, it'll pull out the the the, the Python function documentation uh, and, and put that in there, right? So. So that's one thing. Um, another thing that I've generally found useful is to also open up a um, um, a console for the notebook. So basically, what this does, if I can bring that over um, here, is is this is a, a an interactive console. So this interface is meant to be used more as if you're typing in. Python code interactively as opposed to the notebook, which is meant to be more like a document that you kind of render um, um, that's a collection of text interspersed with code, okay? But uh, uh, here, you know, so, so these are both using the same kernel, so I can, I can use this in a more interactive way to, for example, I can use directory to see what are all the current variables uh, and things that are defined in my uh, my namespace right here, right? And I can use this to run functions, you know, so I, I kind of the last thing we did here was define a factorial function, so I could use this to uh, say call a factorial function. So, I mean, you can, you can get the same thing by, for example, adding a new cell, But I find it useful to have the the the, the uh, a, a kernel running in a console like this, so I don't clutter up my notebooks as I'm trying to create them um, with a new cell. So the you know for example you know the basic idea, um, and again this is a task. So if, if I if I restart my kernel and clear all the outputs, this kernel gets restarted as well. So now if we do a directory, um, um, I mean, there's there's a few things that are loaded by default into a kernel, but not so much anymore. So we don't have a lot of things defined. Um, and then, for example, um, if, if we tell it to show all kernel activity, that's another thing I, I like to turn on for these. Then I can do things like, say, um, so let's say run all the cells above this cell here. So... Um, you have to get that from uh, from here. So, so run all above the, the selected cell. So that you'll see, and you'll see it's running these over here as well, right? So anyway, we ran all the cells up to this point. So now we can kind of see um, just the stuff that's currently defined right now. Which actually, there's, there's not much defined yet. So I was just just showing um, some expressions and things. So. Um, So those are the, the basics of some of the things that I like to do, like how I like to use Jupyter Notebooks and Jupyter Cells. So, but you definitely need to make certain that you understand, you know, how, how to use cells, how to create cells, um, how to, you know, the difference between the markdown uh, and code cells um, and, and, and use those where appropriate, right? So use markdown cells if you're entering in text into a notebook and use code cells if you've got Python code or some other code that you're um, executing and demonstrating here. So, um, and yeah, if, if you need help to find commands, so so as you're learning Jupyter Lab, um, um, this can be helpful to, for example, to, to find out um, um, keyboard shortcuts or other kinds of commands. So if I needed the command to um, like add a new cell below here. I could say maybe search for add, uh, or there was like run selected cell, you know, so control enter. But um, um, so let's see here. Like let's let's say I want to add a cell. So maybe it's not add, but how about we search for cell, cut cell, copy cell. So so like the 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 
the, the big X and C are for cutting cells and copy cells, right? So again, like I was talking about, um, this modal editor here, it's, it's, it may be good to learn this um, if you start doing a lot where you're creating notebooks. So if I'm um, in the, 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 the mode to move around, that's when I can use things like this. So if I want to, for here, I could, I could use an X to cut the cell. Um, and then I should be able to use V to paste it back in, right? Um, so if I wanted to, I could like copy this cell and then paste some paste some copies of it down there. Um, but oh yeah, A and B. So if I just want to insert like an empty cell below, I could use B to insert it below, or A to to insert a cell above. Okay. Anyway, so, so this can make you quite a bit more um, productive and pr proficient if you kind of learn the keyboard short but shortcut, so you can move around and, and add cells and then. So and, and once again, you know, uh, if you want to get in and actually edit a cell, you can hit return. Um, sorry, hit return. That gets you into the editing. And then shift enter or, or well escape will actually get you back into the, um, the, the 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 mode to move around between cells uh, and enter will get you in and then shift enter to actually execute that's one way to execute a cell so uh, all right and if you've been watching you notice that you know that every time I do stuff over here um, um, it's getting echoed over here. If I want to stop kind of cluttering my notebook by adding new cells and stuff, I can go over here and test stuff out, like the value of x and other stuff. So, um, okay. So anyway, that that was kind of the, the the command finder here to help you kind of find stuff. So, um, okay. So I think that was kind of the basics of all the stuff that I wanted to, to show you um, and mention, you know, so using markdown uh, and markdown cells and using code cells and how you use contextual help, things like that. So as a final thing, I'll go back um, and look at shutting down your notebook, okay? Or, or shutting down the JupyterLab server, basically. So um, I do usually like to, you know, make certain that in case, in this case, I, probably, I don't really want to save all this. I'm going to discard those. So I'm, I'll just close that off and discard my changes. I might, I might want to make certain everything else can close off cleanly here. So, right. Um, yeah, and you know, to be completely certain, you might want to even shut down. I mean, it's not necessary before I shut down my whole Jupyter Lab server, but but you might want to do that. And you can also even log out. It's not a bad idea. So 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 get back out here. Um, so anyway, you know, back from your terminal, you can do a vagrant halt then to, to cleanly shut down your um, virtual machine. So unfortunately, it's not vagrant down. Uh, it's not an actual command. It's just vagrant halt to um, to shut down or take it down. So, so that should cause the the virtual machine to shut down. So if you've done that, um, so now if you try and go to um, there, you'll find that it's not running there anymore, right? So if you try to go there, you have to, to do a vagrant up um, to get your Jupyter Lab server uh, running again, right? Um, And the, so once again, once it boots back up, um, so if you see a few warnings, you shouldn't. Like, you don't have to worry about like this one. You know, if if you have your box is a little bit behind the most current version, right? And sometimes you might get some other warnings, right? So, um, but uh, usually once you get past the point for, um, you'll see a message about. Um, well, after
after this point anyway. So 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 after it's, it's waiting for it to boot, uh, so again you might get some warning that that you know. So here it was just waiting to see whether the machine is coming up cleanly or not. But basically after this point, uh, you'll see. Uh, yeah, once you see that the machine is booted and ready, you should then be able to. Um, access to your notebook um, server here. Although, yeah, yeah, so it might take a little bit of time for the Jupyter Hub service to actually start running, but but it should be up pretty much at, within a few seconds after you see that message that you can get into the Jupyter Hub and Jupyter Lab. So, um, okay, so that's basically it for this um, video so we kind of just covered a little bit random but but covered some of the the uh important uh, kind of to me some of the nice features of, of jupyter lab and running jupyter notebook so hopefully that information is useful to you um and i will see you then in the next video